Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith and this is uh, Shackleton. You know, many of you have probably been following the progression of Hurricane Dorian, which has turned out to be an absolutely catastrophic storm for, for the Bahamas. And um, I'm going to talk about how climate change, first of all, I'll talk about some of the specifics of Dorian and also the most surprising thing about this storm is that it basically came along and essentially got pinned to the Bahamas, got pinned to Grand Bahama Island. It basically, um, you know, on the National Hurricane Center updates, the forward speed of the storm was given as stationary for a number of different reports. And it's just been kind of sitting there, you know, slowly it's moving to the northwest now. Uh, but it's been penned for an extraordinarily length of time. It's basically stalled out, and we haven't seen this before with a Category 5 hurricane. If you recall uh, Harvey in 2017, when it came ashore in Texas, it stuck around for, for, uh, four, for many days, you know, three, four days, I think, moving about one mile per hour, and it was half on the water, half on the land, and the land was so saturated. I was talking about a... a a um, brown ocean effect where there's so much water on the land that uh, water evaporates and fuels the storm and it dumped up to five feet of um, rainfall in some places so i'm going to talk about how climate change is making hurricanes much more dangerous how it's changing a lot of different properties of hurricanes but first of all i'll talk about some of the specifics of uh of dorian so this is an article which you can just Google, and I suggest you do that now and have a look at it, How Climate Change is Making Hurricanes More Dangerous. It's from uh, the group uh, Yale uh, Climate Connections. But before I get into that, I want to just um, remind you, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net, and uh, the last post was on all of the sort of global warming tipping points, and I was talking about the Amazon, how close the Amazon is is getting to uh, tipping over. Seventeen percent of the Amazon is gone, and there are studies that show, you know, if we if we reach the twenty to twenty-five percent number, then the Amazon can tip over into savanna and grasslands, and that would be catastrophic for Brazil, for South America, and also for the world because the Amazon is a is a big carbon sink, and uh, we threaten turning it into a carbon source if we continue with the destruction of it. So I'm going to talk all about this paper, like I said, in detail. But first of all, I want to do some background and look at what's actually happened with Dorian so far. So this is a region of the world um, off Florida. This is part of the Bahamas. The Bahamas is a huge chain. I think Nassau is the capital, largest city. Freeport is next. So it's on Grand Bahama Island. So Basically, Great Abaco. So Dorian came across and came ashore, I believe, at El Bouquet, crossed over here and went and hit um, the Grand Bahama Islands, and it's sitting up here at the moment. It basically took tremendous amounts of time, you know, a day and a half to cross this area, moving almost no speed. Then it got pinned here and basically was stationary um, for for uh, a, a lo an extraordinarily long period of time. So you can get kind of the lay. So basically, the layout of, of where it hit and the damage it, it did. So if you just go into Google and Google, um, Google Google Earth and bring up Google Earth and do a search for Bahamas and you can get into this sort of um, map. And also you can focus on specific regions um, that you want to and uh, you know if you click on the if you hold the mouse pointer over here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen it gives you the elevation of that location so you can kind of get an idea you know why I'm not sure it's not always accurate it says minus 10 meters there <laughs> okay I'm not yeah it's not that calibrated but it gives you an idea for you know to give you the sort of the range of the elevation uh, and the lay of the land. So like I said, the, the hurricane came across here and it stalled out here and it basically sat here for long periods of time. 
Okay, so Grand Bahama, just to get some idea, if you want to, you know, go to the Wikipedia and look at Grand Bahama, it gives you a good sort of overview of the island. Um, and uh, 51,756 people. Um, and, you know, the area and coordinates and, um, you know, specific uh, geographical features. This is a topographic map of Grand Bahama Island. And um, basically the green is 0 to 15 feet elevation, the yellow is 15 to 30 feet elevation, and the red is greater than 30 feet elevation relative to sea level. And the storm surge from this hurricane was tw up to 24 feet was reported. So that would cover all of the green area and two-thirds of the yellow area. Just to give you an idea, most of the island, you know, um, the, the, the majority of the island, at least in the north, you know, all the way along, um, was uh, covered in water. Okay, so the other um, group of islands, part of the Bahamas again, that was hit, is the Abaco Islands. So we, this is the Grand Bahama Island. This is the Abaco Islands. Okay, so the hurricane came across here and there's um, 17,224 people. It was a population in 2010. And again, you can get the topographic map. So zero to 15 feet above sea level, the green, that would all be underwater. The yellow, 15 to 30 feet. So, you know, 15 to 25 feet was basically, was the storm surge. So most of the yellow was covered and the red would be the only parts above, above the storm surge. And don't forget the waves on top of that and the tide. So, so this was a catastrophic event for these islands. Now, to get a lot of information, I rely heavily on Twitter. So this is my Twitter feed and Basically, so, you know, you can look at all of the updates. I mean, we'll just get a flavor of it. I mean, Dorian sat virtually stationary for the past 24 hours. You know, I think for a total of about 36 hours. Now, hurricanes feed off warm water. So it would be using up the warm water at the surface. Um, and that would, there'd be upwelling of water from below. And I guess a lot of that water from below was also warm because the hurricane you know, maintain strength for quite a long period of time sitting stationary, but eventually upwelling cold water comes up and it filled in the eye of the hurricane and the hurricane downgraded from category five to category four to three. And I just heard that it's reached two. And as it's um, getting weaker and weaker, it's expanding in area. So it's still a very, very powerful storm and it's starting to move to the northwest away. So it's starting to move up along the coast seaboard of the US. Now, it's one of the slowest moving major Atlantic hurricanes on record. So, it's, so it just um, set number one, the record, um, over a period of 24 hours. This is the average um, speed over a period of 24 hours since records began in 1851 for all um, major Atlantic hurricanes, and the speed was 1.3 miles per hour, averaged over 24 hours, and that far exceeds any of the previous records. Okay, these are some of the speeds. And for a Category 5, um, you know, it basically set, set the record. So I got some images here from Radar Scope, um, and this is what the hurricane was looking like at 10 o'clock this morning uh, off, uh, you can see um, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach, you know, 30 miles or so. Okay, so that's 10 o'clock this morning. And this is uh, seven o'clock the previous night. Okay, locked in pretty much the same position. And then um, 5.30 the previous day, similar sort of thing. And then 1.50 the previous day. So basically the storm has been locked in place, slowly nudging upwards along the coast, but not significantly. Um, this is uh, basically, sh this is stalling hurricanes, um, uh, the percentage of the total. 
So category zero, category one, two, three, four, five. Hurricane Dorian is the first category five to basically stall out. Okay, and you can look at my Twitter feed. This is the article I'm going to be talking about in detail about the climate change influence on hurricanes. This is showing the coastline of the Grand Bahamas and the parts that were shown inundated, um, the parts that were actually inundated. And I believe this is uh, data. Um, and you can see here, you know, the hurricane crossing the Grand Cayman and then stalling out and the eye getting larger and larger and distorted. I think there was an eye wall replacement. Okay, and uh, then the eye basically shrank down after that and the category stopped dropping. This is somebody, this is uh, 20 to 25 feet above sea level. Um, this is a guy's house and you can see the waves uh, coming up that high, the storm surge and the waves coming up that high on this guy's house. Um, like just, what a nightmare. You know, this is the, this is a uh, image, is, this is a footage from an attic where you can see the waves coming right up to the gables of the attic and water actually coming in into the attic. Um, and, uh, you know, here's trying, to, this is a good explanation of what, what people in the Bahamas have been experiencing. Imagine an EF3, EF4 tornado in your front yard or beachfront. Then add 20 feet of storm surge, 20 plus inches of rain, flying, floating debris, while your yard completely erodes for 30 straight hours. So the winds of this hurricane are equivalent to an EF3, EF4 tornado, okay? But it doesn't go through past your place in 30 seconds or a minute. It sits around for hours and hours and hours completely raising, um, you know, completely raising all buildings, power lines, this is total destruction. Um, this is a, I showed you this image from the Wikipedia on Grand Cayman Island. Again, green zero to 15 feet, yellow 15 to 30, red is 30 plus. Okay, so there's all kinds of stuff on, on um, the Twitter feed. Of, of images and so on associated with this storm. And remember that you can look at hashtag Dorian2019 and get more images or specifically hashtag Dorian. There's all kinds of different um, images available of, of this storm. Okay, now just to remind you, um, this is the hurricane, the category scale. So, you know, category five, 252, or higher kilometers an hour. That's greater than 157 miles per hour. Dorian um, reached, Dorian basically had speeds, had sustained speeds over 180 miles per hour. If you look at the gap here in the scale, category four is 130 to 156. That's a spread of 26. If you add 26 to this, you get 183 miles per hour. So there should be, we need to put on a category six, you know, in kilometers an hour, it would be 190, greater than 295 or so, because Dorian reached, you know, sustained winds about 185 miles per hour or higher. Uh, and there were gusts up to 225 miles per hour, which is 360 kilometers an hour, like just unbelievable speeds. And of course, utterly catastrophic is 252 or higher. Okay, buildings destroyed, roofs torn off, floods, like it's just catastrophic damage. Um, if you look at the wind speeds of tornadoes, the EF5 is greater than 200 miles an hour. You know, tremendous damage. Normally, the highest winds on Earth are in tornadoes, but what we're seeing is that some of the strongest hurricanes are reaching speeds that match those of the, of the uh, strongest categories of tornadoes. Okay, I mean, you know, gusts up to 225 miles an hour, that's well above EF5 uh, wind speeds. You know, in tornadoes, when they talk about tornadoes, you know, being EF5, that's the peak wind speed measured. So if you use that criteria for hurricanes, then um, we're matching EF5, uh, Dorian's matching EF5. Okay, I'm going to continue this video in uh, another few videos, a series of videos. Thanks for listening.